Hello, hello everyone, it's your old pal Toon here and welcome back to another video. Starting a video in the evening, I was just so enraptured by the light coming through the window, but tonight I am going to do one of my favorite activities, which is I just finished this sketchbook and as a result, it's time to start a new one and I can decorate my new sketchbook now. I actually don't have, usually I use these moleskin sketchbooks because I have been using them for a really long time and when I line them up on the shelves, it's very satisfying that they're all exactly the same size, but I don't think I happen to have one, but I do happen to have some other sketchbooks and I'm starting to feel guilty about my art supply hoarding and I think it's time to pick something out of the pile <laughs> and try something new. These are the main ones that I was looking at. I have, what is it? It's a Talon's Art Creation Sketchbook. I have it in two sizes. I absolutely just bought these because they're yellow and I wanted to put them on the shelf to match my decor. But I've also heard relatively good things. Um, the small one's obviously too small to be my primary sketchbook, but I have the yellow one in a normal full size of five and a half by eight and a half inches. And then I have this one, which is also a moleskin sketchbook, but it has a soft cover and obviously it's a square format. I was leaning towards using this one, but I generally bring my sketchbook around with me to do drawing out of the house or when I'm traveling or stuff like that. So I think I'm actually going to pivot to the talons and let this be my next primary sketchbook. And it's not because it's exactly the same size as a moleskin and it's still gonna look good on the shelf when it's done. <laughs> So I am happy to introduce you to my enormous sticker collection. I have been collecting stickers for, goodness me, these are easily upwards of 10 plus years of collecting. I never get rid of any stickers, why should I? I just add them to my hoard. And I pretty much exclusively use them to do these sketchbook decorations. I really don't apply them anywhere else. So basically, uh, I'll finish a sketchbook every six months or so, and then I like to have the stickers on the outside have a color theme to them. So right now I'm just going through all of the single stickers and then all of the sticker sheets to pick out some stuff that has a cohesive color theme. So I'll usually choose like a sticker that I really want to be on the sketchbook and then kind of build out from there. And what ended up, uh, I guess, being discovered through this process was a blue and green color palette using the yellow as an accent and um, bringing in some browns that are of that same color family as the yellow. The larger single stickers are the most important part because they're gonna be taking up the bulk of the space and then the sticker sheets I usually use as the smaller because like when you're designing something you want to have a size hierarchy <laughs> so it's all about finding stuff in different sizes to fill every hole and the first thing I'll do is lay them all out on the sticker, uh, sorry, on the sketchbook without sticking them down. And then I'll take a photo or a mental picture if I'm feeling, you know, feeling brave. And then I'll take the backings off, put them all down, start layering from the back up. It's kind of fun to have a little bit of layering and then start filling in the micro holes with some of the smaller pieces that I picked out. Sometimes when I'm working on them, I'll peel them back and re-stick them a few times. Unfortunately, this does lead to a little bit of a decline in the um, like quality of the stick to the actual sketchbook. 
And unfortunately, over time, some of the stickers do start to come unpeeled or get a little wear on them because they're not like the highest quality vinyl, but it's all part of the process of the sketchbook. Start fresh, just like all the empty pages inside, and as time goes on, fill it up and add your unique texture to how it looks. <laughs> everyone it is uh, Wednesday night tuna here checking in so tomorrow morning I am headed back to Courtney Comox please I need to sneeze let me sneeze free me I think it's like extremely dusty in my apartment because I was sneezing all day in here this morning and when I was out I was not sneezing at all and here I am sneezing again so Anyway, yes, yeah, so tomorrow morning I am headed out to Courtney Comox to do a very chill evening craft market that's called like the Geeky Craft Market, I think? Geeky Winter Market, Geeky Christmas Market, Geeky Gift Market, something to that effect. And this is organized by the same people who did the con that I did back in the spring, if you remember the vlog from that video. I had an amazing time and the vendors who were there told me that they did this Christmas thing, so I had my... Uh, ears open and my eyes peeled for when applications went live. I jumped on that, grabbed some booth space, and I'm off to go do it again. <laughs> my strategy here is because my uh, mom is actually driving me to the island and then we're staying in her place while we're there, I've decided to just throw everything that I have into bins and figure it out when I get there. I don't remember what size booth space I got. I'm pretty sure it was like a bigger one. I don't remember if I requested a table, so I'm gonna bring my table just in case. And I'm bringing the rest of the t-shirts that I have, a bunch of tote bags, and hopefully I won't have forgotten anything. One of the really weird things actually is that I have this set of pins called the Kitty Cafeteria pins. I sold out of one design, but I still have like a very small handful of the other three, and I cannot for the life of me figure out where they are. The last time I would have seen them would have been at the Etsy Co market at the beginning of October. I could not find them for Pentacon, and still I am like, where have these pins gone? So one of these days they're gonna turn up and it's gonna be a real big surprise, but other than that, I think I have everything packed up. Weather is not looking great, so we'll see how the weekend goes, but either way, nice to get out of town, do another chill small town, literally, it's like from 3.30 to 8.30 p.m. or something. It's so short. I don't know what to expect, but it works out to be a good excuse to spend some time with my family. And it's a very soft start on what's going to be a very chaotic 
Christmas market season. <laughs> I will finish up packing my personals, I will go get a good night's nice rest, and I will see you guys in the morning. everyone i'm here in courtney bc ready for a geeky market tonight it's like 10 a.m right now and we start setting up around 12 30 and then the market goes from 3 to 8 30. definitely the first time i've ever done this sort of evening quick turnaround kind of setting i'm looking forward to it i don't barely any stress because like it's so low stakes just being a few hours in the afternoon I came up here with my family this time, so my, they're gonna drive me to the event and like, I was able to bring like all of my display stuff without having to really worry about it. I can just get there and figure it out <laughs> on the spot rather than having to really carefully select which items to bring because of weight and single human managing to carry stuff abilities. I was told by the people at the spring market that this winter market was really good. They said it was better than the spring market. That remains to be seen. I'm also skeptical since it's literally one evening and I don't think I'm gonna have the volume of sales over one evening that I did over two days. So I don't know if last year, if it was like, I think it was in a different location and I think it was probably also in that bubble of post-pandemic spending frenzy that was going on last year. But either way, I'm going in with no expectations, just here to have a good time. I brought all my leftover apparel, tote bags, and the two male Halloween sweaters that I still have left in stock. So yeah, we'll head down in the afternoon to go set up, get some footage of that, maybe get some footage of the actual event. I have no idea what to expect, and then we'll talk about it on the flip side. Good morning, everybody. It's Monday, November 6th, Tuna here. I just got back last night from my trip to Vancouver Island and today I'm mostly 
doing like admin stuff, emails, um, scheduling, all of that wonderful, wonderful stuff that is not very good to vlog. However, I did receive this sticker order, so I thought we could unpack it together. I honestly, I probably get one of these boxes once a month, maybe once every month and a half, and they're always very exciting. So let's take a look. Always starting with my little freebies bag. My supplier always sends me these samples in order to tempt me to buy more products, and I admit I am always quite tempted because everything is so cute. Here is my order. Okay, these are the sticker sheets for this month. They came out amazingly vibrant. One of the things that I love about my supplier is that they're very reliable for screen color to print accuracy, and this is no exception. Um, it looks amazing. So we're doing weird winter uh, this month, and if you do want to grab this sticker sheet, it's in the lunchbox and big lunch club over on my Patreon. I got a whole ton of these. Uh, I should double check the count. Oh, there we go. It's written on 118, 100, and then etc. Oh yeah, that's right. And so this is new for this batch. I asked my supplier, I'm like, hey, can you print on the back of the sticker sheets? And she's like, well, duh. And so now I can have my logo preloaded onto the sticker sheets. I can have a little promo for my lunchbox club for all of the items that I sell at markets and at, in my retail location. So yeah, that is just so exciting. I completely forgot about that. But anyway, anyway, so all of these ones, I'm, I'm skipping it for these that are going to be shipped out to my patrons because I don't really need to advertise to them. They already know they're already in the club. Uh, but yeah, all of these are reorders for previous sticker designs that I sell exclusively at markets and in my patron shop, uh, reorders of popular designs. And yeah, they've got the details on the back too. And I have been waiting. This one has been out of stock for too long and it is one of my favorite designs. So I am so glad to have it back. Um, we've got mushroom restock. And I almost didn't restock the rabbits, but to be honest with you, they do sell quite well, even though rabbits aren't really my thing. Like, I guess every once in a while, having an animal that's not a cat is okay. We've got the cryptids, always popular. Kitty Coven, by far the most popular sticker sheet. And the uh, Winter Arctic Critters as well, which was a um, last January, I believe, sheet. So yeah got a bunch of reorders, got the sheet for November's sticker club, and I can't wait to unpack these, organize them, and take some photos of these ones because usually I share a digital composite at the beginning of the month to reveal the sheet, but it's always nice to have some actual photos once, once the order arrives. All right, everybody, I happen to have this footage lying around of me working on the base coat for the ferret in this painting, so I figured it would be a nice background image while I tell you a little bit about the geeky uh, holiday market. So obviously I'm back and settled. Um, the event was just for the evening, as I mentioned, and I haven't had a chance to sit down and talk about it, and it was like, over a week ago now, so bear with me as I try to recall all the details. The first thing that I wanna mention is, oh my God, eight feet of table is literally heaven. Please, my kingdom for an eight foot table every single event. Those extra two feet were perfect for fitting my um, sticker sheet rack on, but then I still had the six feet to do everything else. I was still struggling to fit everything on the space, but so much less so than usual. And yeah, I feel spoiled now from now on. Everything went pretty swimmingly. It wasn't super busy at any point, definitely busier towards the start of the event. And then petering off the last hour was just all of the vendors kind of milling about talking to each other, which is not terribly uncommon. But the thing that stood out the most to me is people were saying that in previous events, like last year, this took place on the same evening as another event that was happening in the town. So last year's event was crazy busy as a result of all of these people milling about and being funneled towards where this market was taking place. And that wasn't the case this year. It was a different weekend. So we really only had kind of like the usual crowd, which I should also mention a lot of people who I met at the spring market we're here at the winter market and it was really fun to see those similar faces again to say hello see their costumes or just you know have a chat whatever it may be may be and on that note too pretty much all of the vendors were exactly the same from the spring one as well which is 
I guess to be expected when you're talking about this very small <laughs> area, there's only so many vendors who want to come up to do the event. And I'm the only one there from Vancouver. And I do feel a bit like, look at me when I'm setting up and everything. But I guess I'm used to like a bit of a different vibe for the shows. So, you know, I got to do me either way. And the market ended up going pretty well. For just an evening, I made as much as I did in a day at the spring one so if i recall correctly it was like gross a thousand each day of the spring market and i did a thousand in sales um just over the evening and i think i've mentioned this in previous vlogs and if i haven't now's the time but i have been enjoying the boost in the actual sales number that comes from selling the higher ticket apparel items so yeah, it's hard for me to compare because I didn't have apparel at that event in the spring, but I was making the same volume of sales. So like, I think I sold more items in the spring than I did at this one. But at the end of the day, the numbers still shook out to be like worth my time. And like, I really enjoyed the event. It was very laid back again, like talking to people you, when you don't have an onslaught of customers, you have time to have a chat with whoever wants to have a chat with you. So there were a few things that came up with the people in the community that I kind of wanted to follow through on. Like people were like, oh, would you teach classes? And I'm like, oh my God, yes, I would love to teach classes. So might look into something like that for next year, who knows? It was also fun to have my mom there who was helping me out. She's like, she works in a store, like her husband and her run a store. So she's used to kind of like paying attention and prepping things and chatting. And so she was able to like grab me bags and stick labels on stuff, which was really helpful, especially because we had like two hours to set up and I used that full two hours because as I mentioned, I had no plan for my table going into it. So it was like, okay, what do I have? What am I gonna do with what I have? Um, and so it was great to have her there on backup for needing that all that time. And I think given that this was pretty successful and the spring one was pretty successful, I fully intend to continue to return as long as they'll have me. One of the strange things is that the, even though it's a small event, like I, the organizer, I, I don't know who the organizer is. Um, they haven't like approached me to introduce themselves, which often at smaller events, the organizer will go around and check in with all the vendors. So. I don't know what the deal with that is necessarily, but yep, I'll definitely come back to the spring one, hopefully come back to the Christmas one as well. And this was a wonderful start to a very, very busy upcoming craft market season. So yeah, let's, let's let Faced Tuna take it away from here and tell you a little bit more about that. All right, so just a little bit of housekeeping to wrap things up in the video. Yes, I'm going to be very busy through November and December with Christmas markets. I just ended up saying yes to too many things. So almost every single weekend, I am going to be doing a market through to Christmas. I'm like 50% dreading it and 50% excited. You guys will see all of that here in the vlogs over the next couple of months. But it does mean that I'm probably gonna be cutting back to one video every two weeks. It's just, a little little too much for me to try to manage one video every single week so sorry in advance if the upload schedule is a little reduced for the time being if you are in the lower mainland or you are going to be in vancouver next weekend please come find me at the got craft holiday market I'm gonna be there on saturday and sunday and i am dropping a ton a ton of new stuff for it so stay tuned but now we are at the point of the video where i say thank you to all of my amazing patrons over in my snack pack on patreon these guys are the reason that i can make videos period you can pop over there and support me for as little as a dollar every single pledge makes a huge difference you can see sketchbook flip throughs of the sketchbook that i showed you at the beginning of the video you can get some digital downloads when i have time to make them i do a monthly newsletter podcast sometimes i post recipes and if you want to support me at the 10 or 25 dollar tier i also send you mailable rewards every single month which you saw earlier that's going to be for this month november 2023 the weird winter sticker sheet so if you do want to grab one of those join my patreon that's where you can get it <laughs> But of course I understand that we can't financially support every single creator that we love. So I just wanna thank you for being here, for making it to the end of the video. Have you guys noticed that I always try and put like a blooper or something after this whole spiel? Because I know I click out of a video like nine times out of 10 once they start doing the Patreon shout out. I'm like, video's over, time to go watch something new. But I appreciate you if you do make it to the end. Like and subscribe, that makes a huge difference, I assume. I really hope you enjoyed this week's video. Stay sparkly, don't let the cruel world dull your shine, and I will see you next time.